What's up Brozone, so welcome to the Ozone and welcome to another Security Breach Theory video. So today we are continuing the discussion for my first theory video that I did, which was a little bit about this really weird staff bot family that you could see in the sewers area of Security Breach. Basically, just to explain if you haven't seen the video, when you go down into the sewers after fighting Chica, Chica comes back alive but she doesn't have a beak, she doesn't have a voice, you now have her voice box essentially and you've got to escape the sewers. This is where all of the weird staff bots are, with the black tears and the big smiles that they don't usually have. And I still have a lot of questions about those guys. Why are they like that? Is there some sort of cult going on? Is Vanny painting them on? I have no idea. And the design choices of this are really weird because it does match the uh, the looks of Night Marion and the puppet and all of that, mainly because of the black tears. It also makes me think of things like the Stitch Wraith, where the Stitch Wraith would kill people and black tears would, like, like this black liquid would come from their eyes. There's all different kinds of uh, interpretations you would give this, and I'm not sure how to interpret this specifically. So I'm still kind of thinking about that, but just before you get back up from the sewers, there is this dining table, essentially, with a candle and uh, five people sitting around it. Now in the first video that I made, I said that this is the Afton family, and I think it's very, very obvious that this is, in fact, the Aftons. You have a headless bot. Headless, as in the head has been chopped off or something, maybe bitten off in the bite of 83? Yeah, yeah, so it's the crying child. <laughs> one of them is the crying child. The second one is sort of like dressed as a magician, uh, but mainly a man. Like, you, you, you can make references to William Afton there, I would say. I saw a lot of people in my comments saying that magician could actually be the profession of this staff bot, and it could have some kind of correlation with William Afton. He kind of used magic to bring people back to life. And also there's the whole kind of argument of like the deception and the illusion of like a great businessman, but a, a guy behind it who's actually killing people. Um, there's all sort of in, sorts of interpretations you can have there as well. And the third member is sat at the head of the table and it's got the same color scheme as Ballora. I believe this to be Mrs. Afton. William Afton's lost wife or girlfriend or something. Something must have happened to her because we haven't seen her in any games. We haven't even heard of a woman in the games. But I would say that this may be confirmation that Mrs. Afton possesses Ballora and I feel like it's possible that William built Ballora for Mrs. Afton and that's something that we would have to get into another time but we're going to be going into that a little bit today. Next to the Ballora bot there is a baby bot. Uh, it's very clearly baby, it's got the red pigtails and uh, the same kind of uh, again colour scheme and then next to baby who represents Elizabeth we have Michael uh, who is represented by basically a pizzeria worker, you can tell that by the, the cap and the striped shirt. Uh, and I think it's very clear, like very, very clear that this is the Afton family. And also, if you don't think it's the Afton family, then what do you think this represents? Because I think this is the only thing it can represent. This is like the only defined family we've seen in the games. Of course, you could say this is Henry and, and all of those people, but it's not. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about the further implications of this table of people, uh, mainly because uh, there's actually some really cool design choices here and I think it's to do with where the people are sat. There was a comment on my video, I'm so sorry I've forgotten who it's from, but I will put it on the screen right now. Uh, this comment was fabulous, thank you so so much for writing this. It instantly clicked a load of things in my head. Uh, and now I'm going to tell you uh, that the placement of all of the people does kind of matter. I think if you're sat next to someone, you love them, okay? You love them in the family. I also think if you are sat opposite someone, you kind of don't like them as much. So here is what I mean by that. We're going to start off with the easiest of the five, Mrs. Afton, who is sat at the head of the table. At the head of the table, she is sat opposite 
nobody okay she is sat so she can see the entire family in her view she loves her whole family however the father william afton doesn't like the rest of the family that much obviously it's very clear that michael and william are not sat next to each other there's a clear feud there I think the other reason this is all very clear is because William is sat next to Crying Child as well and I, and I feel like William mourned over Crying Child over his other kids. I mean we know that William made the robots for Elizabeth, however when Elizabeth dies to baby, William sends Michael down to go and put her back together. He doesn't do it himself. And there is clearly something going on with William, like, torturing Michael, so, like, something like that. Uh, I, I really feel like this is perfect, because Michael went to save Elizabeth, William and Crying Child seem to have kind of a closer connection than the others, and, of course, there is the whole feud as well of Crying Child and Michael. I feel like... Like, this is my own personal opinion, I'm very sorry if this is not the same as your opinion, but I feel like Crying Child is who torments uh, Michael in Golden Freddy in FNAF 1, so that there's kind of that correlation there, and FNAF 2 of course as well. So that's very cool, I really love how this is here, I really love how it's brought back uh, kind of Mrs. Afton theories and Ballora, and I really do feel like Mrs. Afton is Ballora. That has a lot of implications I feel like, um, but it's, there's still one question, like there's still one question in the back of my mind. Why is this here? Okay, you could say it's an Easter egg, that's completely fair, but also there's so many other of these Easter eggs, right, that, that are related to the Afton family. Like, what does it all mean? Why is the Afton family's history in the Mega Pizzaplex when it's just supposed to be Freddy Fazbear's history. And if you're unsure what I'm referencing, um, first of all, there's this sister location room. This is literally Afton's living room, right? This is literally, this is above si the sister location. And the reason we know that is because of the fake ending in sister location where Enid comes back up to this room. It's got the exotic butters. It's like whoever made this clearly knew about the whole Michael sister location thing. So is is everything that happened in FNAF like is everything in sister location, everything in FNAF four kind of all of is all of that widely known in in this world? And these are the sorts of questions that you have to ask because there are arcade machines with with really weird designs. Like for example, I mean, I know for a fact that there is a Night Marion plush. I mean, it says Nightmare plush, but it's a Night Marion plush. Why is that there? Like, uh, unless the nightmares really do exist, which I think they do, it, it, like this, it's so weird that, that a Night Marion would be like starring in an arcade game or something. Do you know what I mean? I hope you know what I mean by this. And the other big thing that I want to point out here is the toys, the FNAF 4 toys. They are literally on display in Rockstar Row. Like, it's it's crazy. It's so weird. I don't understand why this is here. So maybe there is something bigger going on with uh, the Mega Pizzaplex. There's something bigger going on with Afton. There might be something bigger going on with Vanny. Have you ever considered that Vanny might be an Afton. Okay, I'm gonna stop myself right here because I know for a fact that she isn't and I know I'm gonna get loads of comments saying Oh no, it's been debunked by all the tapes. Listen, I know about the tapes. I know that Vanessa is not an Afton. Not necessarily anyway. And actually I am going to be doing a video soon on those very therapist tapes. But please let me just set this video up. <laughs> But it is weird that there are some sort of Afton things, and here is where my theory kind of starts to come in. Because we've all been thinking, oh, Vanny is is essentially being controlled by, uh, by Glitchtrap. I mean, she is a reluctant follower. But why? Like, like if, if Vanny is... If Vanny is actually like the one kind of making all of this beneath the pizza flex and stuff like that, bringing 
the FNAF 4 toys, making this dislocation room to feel nostalgia or something, does that mean that really Vanny is glitch trap? Like, it's, this is, it's such a weird, it's so weird. My personal theory is that Afton is somewhat brainwashing Vanessa into believing that she is an Afton. And I feel like that has evidence in the tapes as well. Again, we're not going to be talking about the tapes today though. I think it would explain a lot. I think I think if she was brain being brainwashed into thinking she's an Afton, she can bring the memories back. But why would Afton want that? That's my really big question. Is Afton planning on taking over the pizza plex i don't know i like i'm i'm very i'm confused <laughs> a lot of you had very very good ideas in the comments uh in the last video uh and i really want to hear your thoughts on these kind of new ideas like these all of these easter eggs about the afton family specifically i feel like all of this revolves around this this table this family and it's, it's so strange how even in a game that stars Afton for like 10 minutes of the entire game, it's really weird how a lot of Afton is back. Because Afton always comes back, no matter what form. I feel like Afton is back physically, yes. He's back mentally and he's back spiritually. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, uh, this is really weird. What do you guys think about all of this? Do you also believe that Afton is brainwashing Vanessa? Um, speaking of Vanessa, we're going to need to talk about that, like, next, next time, because there might be two. There might be two Vanessas. Anyway, uh, that is a topic that we're going to go on to next time. I have a lot of information about that. I have a lot of theories. So uh, yes, we will be talking about that next time. I've just got to do a little bit more planning. Uh, but yeah, I will see you then. I hope that you all have a very good Christmas and a great week. And uh, I've been Ozone, but I have to go Zone. Goodbye. <laughs>